So now we are looking at the subjective probabilities. What I was saying before, your gut. When we determine probability based on an experience or an intuition, we make a subjective estimate. Weather forecasts are often subjective probabilities based on the current weather data. The validity of subjective probabilities depends on personal experience and judgment, so there is not much to say mathematically. Weather actually has a good bit of math behind it, but if you just ask random Joe on the street, hey, what do you think the weather's going to be like tomorrow? Yeah, that's just a pure subjective guess. You know, it might be right, might be wrong. So mathematically, for those kind of things, it's really someone's opinion. We don't get into it. So the formal definitions, theoretical, relative frequency, or the experiment empirical, and then subjective. I'm not going to read those. They're wordy. So now we're going to take a look at example six here. Identify which probability would be used in the following cases. So this is three different events, and they're asking, is this talking about theoretical, empirical, or subjective? I am 100% certain that you will be happy with this car. That sounds like an opinion, not a fact. That is our subjective. Based on the data from the Department of Transportation, the chance of dying in an automobile accident during a one-year period is one in 7,000. So they are giving us a probability there, one out of 7,000, but this is based on known data, known things that have happened. So I don't know what the theoretical is. Like, I don't have a good way of determining that, honestly, but based on the data, which is observed, so it's empirical. Or the relative frequency. Now the last one, the chance of rolling a seven with a 12 sided die, yes, these exist, the sides are pentagons, think like a soccer ball, but not as complicated. With a 12 sided die is one out of 12. Assuming it is a fair die, that is the theoretical probability. Um, assuming there is only one seven. All right. So just being able to sort between those two, it's more about like, is this a hardcore math, a no math, or a data statistic? if you will. Because when we base it on data like that, we usually end up calling it a statistic. And we'll talk more about stats later. All right, now, so we've talked about the probability of a thing occurring. Sometimes it is beneficial to talk about the thing not happening. So instead of how many ways can I get no heads, maybe it will be how many ways can I get one or more heads. So when I have my probability written as P with the parentheses A, so the probability of A occurring, whatever A is, the probability that A does not occur is, I think of it as the other side, because the probability of A occurring represents some decimal between zero and one. And then the flip, the other side, the leftover up to one is the probability of it not happening. So that is what goes in here. The probability of, and sometimes we'll just write not A and some people even sometimes use the squiggle, is the number one minus the probability of A occurring. So the probability that A happens or the probability that A does not happen. That should cover everything that happens. Either it happened or it didn't happen. There is no maybe. It's like being pregnant. You can't be halfway pregnant. Either you're pregnant or you're not. So that's the idea here. All 
Okay. So we have some lovely steps here. First, we're going to figure out the total outcomes. This is knowing the total number is based on the multiplication principle. But a lot of times, if the number is quite small, it is actually beneficial to write them all out. So I'd consider anything under 8, possibly even under 12 or 15 to be small enough, but big enough to be interesting. Um, sometimes we talk about two dice being rolled. That is more outcomes, but they're regimented really nicely. OK. So. Step one, calculate how many outcomes are possible. So the, what is the probability that a randomly chosen family with three children does not have two boys and one girl? Well, first, let's just figure out what a family with three kids could have, assuming very boring genders of boys and girls. These were written, yeah. Mathematicians are kind of like people with blinders. They don't always pay attention to perhaps I should not have said boys and girls. It would have been made more sense to say girls and not girls. People who identify as girls and people who do not. Although even then there might be some ambiguity. So we'll just have to find something else that's actually binary. Okay. So assuming old school binary gender. I could have, for my first choice, a girl or a boy. For my next choice, I could have a girl or a boy. And for my third choice, I could have a girl or a boy. Now, I can go through the whole tree diagram here, but it's not going to fit very well. So I'm going to talk through coming up with the outcomes a slightly different way but I will still go off to the side and do the tree diagram. Okay, so I'm still gonna think about like I was gonna move on the tree diagram to generate these outcomes. So girl, girl, girl is one outcome. That would be like top, top, top. All the top paths in the tree. Now, almost all the top and then one down. Girl, girl, boy. All right, so that's taking care of all of my girl, girl ideas. So now we're going to go girl, boy, and then run through the other two. So girl, boy, girl, and girl, boy, boy. So I went top, bottom, top, top, bottom, bottom. Or up, down, down, if you will. All right, so that is four outcomes for girl, for the first one being a girl, and there are four outcomes for the first one being a boy. Now we are gonna do the same thing. So boy, and then up, up, girl, girl. So boy, girl, girl. Boy, girl, boy. So that takes care of my BG. So now we're gonna go boy, boy. And then that last one can be a girl or a boy. So we see eight outcomes. Now I want you to think back. Two times two times two. Those were our number of outcomes. Two times two times two is eight. I see eight things here in my list, so I know I have the full and complete list. Like my thinking from one side is matching my thinking from the other side. I'm good. I know a lot of people sometimes will struggle with that. Like, do I have the full list? Come up with a logical way to go through and figure it out. So if that means you take the time and you draw a tree diagram, you take the time and draw the tree diagram. I would rather you took the extra time and be certain of your answer rather than trying to do it fast and making a careless error. So if we're going to do this with the branching, I would have girl or boy. And then from the top one, I would have girl or boy. And from the bottom one, I would have girl or boy. And then off of each one of those, we end up with girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. 
Now, if you actually lined all these up in the order I wrote them and thought of them as true or false instead of girl or boy, it'll look exactly like the three column truth table. So the first one was four and then four. See, four girls, four boys is the front choice. Then the next column, two girls, two boys, two girls, two boys. And then the last one just alternates girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. So there is often a logical way to think through what the possible outcomes are. Okay. I like having just the eight written like this because it's a little easier to talk about the next thing. So what is the probability of having two boys and one girl? So let's find the instances where this is the case. And we'll go ahead and use some highlighter here. So all girls, two girls, two girls, two boys. There's one. No, and then there's one. Two boys and a girl, two boys and a girl. And right underneath, two boys and a girl. And I look, girls first, girls second, girls third. Those are all the possible positions. That works. So our probability of having a family with this setup is three out of eight. So we'll say A is a family with three children having two boys and one girl. That is our event. So the probability of A, nah. is three out of eight, which is 0 0.375, a little over a third of the time. But what we actually wanted was the probability that a randomly chosen family with three children does not have two boys and one girls. So this is that how to find a knot we were just talking about. So the one minus the probability. If it does occur three out of eight times, then it does not occur five out of eight times. So the probability of not A is one whole minus three over eight, which is 0.625, which is also five. Five-eighths. All right. So that's using that not idea. You can figure out the probability of doing it and then you just do one minus that result to get the probability of not doing it. That way you're not having to think of, well, what are all the other possible ways? Like, how would I write those? That gets tedious. All right. The table that display, displays the probability for all possible events of interest is called a probability distribution. I literally read the words from down here. So the distribution is a table with all the possible outcomes and the probability of the events. So first we list the outcomes, then we group the outcomes based on the events. So the way we're looking at it. So for the boys and the girls, I might say, okay, I'm gonna take the perspective of girls cause I'm female and yes. So there would be those eight outcomes, but my events might be three girls, two girls, one girl and zero girls. And then that probability distribution is going to be different. So then we make a table or a figure that displays all the probabilities. The sum of all the probabilities must be one. So this probability distribution has to account for everything that could occur is in one and only one of the event categories that we're naming. So let's see that in action here. All right, 
So first we're gonna look at eight here. Make a table of the probability distribution for the number of heads that occur when three coins are tossed simultaneously. All right, so I have my events listed. I could have three heads, two heads and a tail, one head and two tails, or zero heads and three tails. If I don't care about the order, those are the only four things that could occur. Now they're doing this deliberately. Those are events, not outcomes. Outcomes are written with the order in mind as well. Like as much information as you would possibly need. So if we think about our diagram, like if I was gonna draw the tree diagram here, I will end up with three heads. There's only one way to do it. Likewise, three tails. There's only one way to do it. Now, two heads and one tail or one head and two tails, it's the same thing, just all the coins are flipped over. And I know there's two times two times two, eight total. So there should be three in each of these. And there is, so this one would be head, head, tails, head, tail, heads, tail, head, heads. I'm just moving where the tail is. And then down here, now I say two tails and I move where the head is. So tail, tail, head at the end, tail, head, tail, head in the middle, head, tail, tail, head at the front. So each of those has three, whereas these others are one. And the total there is one plus three plus three plus one is eight. So the probability of getting all three heads is one out of eight. The probability of getting exactly two heads will occur three eighths of the time. And likewise, getting exactly one head will occur three eighths of the time and then back to one eighth of the time for no heads. And if we add those four decimals, it's gonna total up to one. That is everything that could happen with the frequency that it would occur. So that's the idea on being able to fill out a probability distribution table is you think about all the possible outcomes and then count the categories they go to. You know, in fact, let me do that a little bit better. I kind of did this the back ass words way. Okay. So let's run through our possibilities. So we know there's the head, head, head. Then I could have head, head, tail. And this is going to look like that three diagram thing again, like we had with the girls and the boys. So this last one is going to go heads, tails. Then this one will be two heads, two tails, two heads, two tails, and then four heads and four tails. So our first one was all three heads. Our next category was exactly two heads. So this one has two heads, this one has two heads, and this one has two heads. So no, the way we produced them, they weren't all clumped together. That's okay. It's still three of the eight outcomes. All right, now if I take a look at exactly one head, there is one, there is one, there is one. So again, three. And then our last one, three tails which is no heads. So now we see, those are my results from doing a full tree diagram. And I've put each outcome into one of my event categories and only one. So when we talk about events, we don't wanna double count anything because these probabilities are supposed to add up to one. All the things that can occur with no overlap. Later on, we'll start thinking about overlap and counting and double counting and doing weirder stuff. But right now it's very, you are or you are not the thing. All right. So this table from the book, I thought I would give to you also some extra data you had, but why are you doing this there? 
So when we roll two dice, I can track, like if I color the dice, there's a red and a blue dice, I can say the red dice was this number, the blue dice was this number. So I could track the dice independently and keep track of that in a table and write down all the possible outcomes. So rolling a red six-sided dice, there's six outcomes. Rolling a blue six-sided dice, there's six outcomes. So we get six times six, 36. That's why all of these probabilities have 36 as the denominator and they didn't bother to reduce. 36 actually does reduce with a lot of stuff. It's nice, but they wanted to leave it so you could see that they all total to one. And then this diagram here is one of the ways to represent the probability distribution. So this table on the left, the two columns, that is one way to do a probability distribution. The graphical representation with all the bars is another way to represent the probability distribution. And that is why the title on your graph is so very important and the labels for the axes. Because I could change the name, change the labels, and then it's a totally different graph. So never make assumptions when you present a graph. Like if you're going to put one into a PowerPoint for something, label it. Because worst comes to worst, like you put extra information up there, but it'll happen where somebody says, hey, when you did that table, was it this or that? And if you look and you've got your labels there, you can remember, oh, I did this. And you can answer the question and you don't lose your stride. So good tip for the future. So here they're talking about the sum. They no longer care about the order of the dice. So I just look at what the two dice roll and add it up. So I could get a two, only one way, one and one. Three, there's two ways to get that, one, two, or two, one. Four, there's three ways to do that, the one, three, or the three, one, and the double two. The five is one, four, four, one, and two, three, three, two. Now you can set up across the top, the first die, down the side, the second die, and you end up with a grid where you look at, well, these are the two dice. I add them up and put it here. And you can make the entire grid of 36. And what you're going to see is the sums actually are the things where the sums are the same as the diagonals, strangely. That's just where they happen to occur. And then you could look at the full thing like this. But this, if I just pay attention to the sum and not which where the numbers were, this is the frequency that they occur at. So one, two, three, four, five, six ways for each of the first, and then it goes back down, five, four, three, two, one, because there's only one way to get 12, two sixes. So just another thing we like to use when we talk about probability. So I just wanted to put it out there so it was a little more at the forefront of your brain. All right, we're going to pause it here and then come back.